Hey guys, Planet Reefer here. We're down in sunny Florida. Uh, we're down at the Coral Corral, which is actually my local fish store for right now. Um, yeah, let's go take a look and see what they have to offer and uh, have a good time and enjoy ourselves. All right, guys, now we're inside the Coral Corral. We're on the left side, gonna see a big freezer for their frozen fish foods. We keep turning we're gonna see a smaller fridge with products from aquaholics such as their phytoplankton revive and other copia pods if we go down a little further we're gonna see products from dr g's this is gonna be their rotifer max their lps max and mysis max now on the right side when you walk in you're gonna see one of their flagship tanks this is gonna be mini uh we're gonna see more footage footage of that a little bit later and once we walk further in, we're gonna start seeing their dry goods section. We're gonna see their coral runs. We're gonna see some of their invert systems. And on the other side of the invert system is their fish system. Uh, we're gonna go start on the fish system first and work our way across. Um, now that we're coming into focus, we're gonna see their 600 gallon uh, water tanks. Each of them are 600 gallons. They're gonna be their RO water and their salt water. So now that brings us on to our fish system. Our fish system pretty much acquires clownfish, firefish, angels, butterflies, and a lot of rasps. We get orders twice a week, which is usually a Tuesdays and Wednesdays. During uh, the week, we actually run three different medications. We run one that's going to be a, I would call it quick here, which is a Melipi green mixed in with a formulin, and then also Prozzi Quonsal, which is a dewormer, which grasses are notorious of getting, and then Nitrofurazone. Sometimes we do get some of these more exotic deep sea big eye soldier guys coming in. And in our systems, as you can see, we have no live rock. Every decoration in here is plastic. Uh, that way, our medications can really go to the pulse level in here and nothing's gonna be soaked up or consumed. Our main filtration on this system is a, a, a sand fluidization filter. And just some really exotic guys. And I mean, we order up from all over the country. Now each system that we're sitting or seeing here is 80 gallons each. This entire run is one system, 240 gallons. So what's nice about having separate systems like this is I can shut this one off from the main system and run a stronger or a different medication if needed just for these certain fish. Even with my top row, I have that kind of controllability, which is really needed in this kind of situations. Back here, you can see I have a giant sized protein skimmer for pulling out the waste and get that oxygen levels where we need to be. And then right here is our sand fluidization filter. This is what I was talking about earlier for a biological. This is what's holding our biological stable in this entire system right here. And we do uh, like to keep a height of salinity of 1.022, maybe to 2.3. Uh, temperature is always hovering between 76 and 77 degrees. All right, so now it brings us to our invert section here. We're going to start off with the filtration. And as you can see again, big, large protein skimmer, filter sock method, and the GFO or granite ferric oxide reactor for the phosphates in here. Since we do have eels and groupers, we are doing a lot of feeding in here. So that definitely helps out with the algae control. The first three systems that we're walking up to are going to be what we call the mangrove section. So usually when we start off with small pods that we have for sale, these ones we've had have been growing here for over at least eight years. Um, pretty cool to see the start from pods. Moving on down, got my little honeycomb grouper poking out right here. These are usually my yield systems that are going to be lined up right here. And just like my fish system, each system right here is 80 gallons each, 240 for each section, so I can really 
close these off. Any medications, anything that I have to do for quarantining, I've got the control. Up top, we got our hermit crabs, blue legs, scarlets, Mexicans, good variety for all the different jobs. We also like to keep cleaner shrimps, blood shrimp, we even got sexy shrimp in right now, and also peppermint shrimp with the Aptasia control. Moving on down, we have ourselves nice mantis shrimp. This guy is a zebra mantis, and it's cool about this one, he's got the spear, so he actually catches the fish just like a prey mantis. Up top, I got some of the red four fuzzy lionfish and some leaf fish in here. So usually where I keep the venomous guys. Always with tops. Also, we have our chato. We also have polypria here and other macro out. Also in this system down right below the macro, the chato, I have what's called a epaulette shark and a rainbow basilet. Unfortunately, these guys like to really hide during the day. They like to be in the dark, so turning the lights off is when they really come out the most. You can see the epaulette's kind of down in the middle. He's a little baby. The next system over, we do have our rose bubbles mixed in with our wild parky clownfish, getting that symbiotic relationship going. This system's pretty fun. Condylactus anemones mixed in with gorgonians, but we also have jawfish in here, the pearly jaws. Up top up here, we do have our bumblebee snails for those vermin snails that actually hunt and will eat them. So again, I mean, it's all about variety here at the shop. We like to make sure that we have a lot of different choices to go after those different problems that people are facing. This has got to be one of the coolest kinks in the system is, is the blue ribbon eel that we have. He's actually black right now, so he's a juvenile. We've had him now for three months. So something here at the Coral Crowd we take pride in is our ribbon eels. We usually get them off the live food probably the first week, get them onto the frozen after that. We have no problems with them. Up top up here, you're going to see what's called tiger conks. These guys are great, especially for any kind of tritus that's sitting on top. And then also we do sell what's called goo shrimp here, a lot of the feeders for those animals that just refuse to eat anything that's frozen or dry. In this little specimen container right here, we have what's called a pink angler. Usually we get them on all different colors and different sizes. That will do for our invert system. Thanks for watching. I'm Zach, one of the managers here at the Coral Corral. And here behind me, we have our coral runs. This is where we sell all of our coral to the main public, everything that is at least priced and listed. We have two front tubs up here. Uh, both are generally just display. Uh, we have a lot of things growing out. This side is more SPS uh, dominance and LPS coral as well. Everything's stony on uh, this section here. Then on this section, we have all of our soft corals, a lot of uh, overgrown mushrooms, star polyps, a ton of softies that have taken over. Uh, we restricted them to a couple of different areas. Uh, still, everything's for sale, but this gives us just more uh, an ability to keep everything messy. Down the line, we have uh, from the back right, going all the way around, making a U down to the back left, so goes from $5 uh, all the way to $300 listed. So, I want to show you guys the nicest stuff to start off with, so let's go down to the $300 section. You can see everything is on RFGs. We have viewfinders for the public to uh, look through in the water to see every uh, bit of coral. We also have all the plumbing going through these tubes here. Uh, that way we can dose directly in the system without uh, letting like our alkalinity powder uh, just sit in the water column. But here's some of our nicer things, uh, whether it's high end, rare to get, nice color, or uh, just pure size. You know, this, this might be like 
five pound toad stool right here. Some other things, very tiny. You know, we have some uh, bounce mushrooms. Got torches, hammers, hands, donnies, you name it. Back over here though, is where we get all of our new corals in. Sometimes uh, we let new uh, frags to come out, sit back here and crust a little bit more, uh, just organize it so we know where exactly it's all gonna be going. But anytime we get new shipments in here, they're all gonna be sitting back here. We also have our own little uh, backed up area. Everything that we wanna hold on to is able to grow out on these three inch discs, which we will cut around the rim uh, once it encrusts fully and then be able to make new frags and let the process repeat itself. On the other end, we have the same deal with uh, frags that are soon to come out onto the floor. Um, surprisingly, it's actually kind of empty in here right now, but when people break down their tanks, we got a lot of corals on rocks. We'll throw it back here. Um, some of the baskets are just home to a ton of different free floating mushrooms uh, and other soft coral that aren't exactly attached. So we got a bunch of rubble on the bottom over there. A bunch of mangroves as well down here. Uh, just one of the parts of where we have mangroves, like uh, our invert system over here. As far as that goes, uh, anything that's a bit different um, would be how it's sectioned off. We pretty much have everything sprawled around here, no specific species in each uh, rack area. We do have our main racks, and then we have our central racks, and most of the center racks have uh, a lot of the SPS. It gets the most focused uh, light in the center, and that's about it for our frag system. I'm Tony. I'm one of the managers here at Coral Corral, Tampa, Florida. Just gonna be going over a little bit of our flagship tank here, right at the front of the store. This is our SPS tank. Um, this is the eldest tank in the shop. We've got mainly sticks in here, a lot of, uh, of high-end stuff. We've had a lot of changes going on here as of late. Um, we've actually finally pulled the halides off and we've gone to all LEDs. Everything seems to be bouncing back pretty well. And um, yeah, this, this tank has some kind of voodoo. Um, it's been up for so long that uh, I can put some corals in here that are struggling and within a few days, they're headed back to normal. Um, we've had quite a lot of people looking for some special pieces in here. Um, we have some stuff that really sticks out. I have it's tenuous up top that actually glows in the dark on its own. Um, We've got some corals in here that are sleepers that don't look like much, but you throw some food in here and they have rainbow feeding tentacles. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here that's that's pretty unique. Uh, the owner's been really building the whole arsenal for a little over a decade. We've had a couple of resets, um, nothing wrong with the tank. We had to change it out one time when the stand uh, started rusting. We had a galvanized stand that somebody drilled into and it's, it bubbled out a little. So that was fun, taking down an almost 700 gallon tank and setting it back up within a week, even with as many people as we had here, it was quite a task. Um, but this one is pretty notorious. We have a lot of people in the area that they've developed into the latter stages of the hobby and they wanna do all SPS. I've got some really tough species in here. We do have a couple types of abertonitis. Um, we have some really difficult tenuouses. Um, so it, it, it's been a lot of fun. The, since I've started here, this tank has been a pretty good learning tool for myself even. Um, there were species in here that I didn't even know about until I started working here. And I was in the hobby for quite a while before this. Um, this is uh, 
Yeah, this is definitely the baby. This is the, the owner's favorite. Um, but yeah, this, this one's always available. If anybody comes down, you know, we can, we can cut off of stuff if it's available. Some things I may not be able to, or we may be letting them settle in a bit. We do get a lot of wild corals that we'll put in here because of the voodoo I was speaking of. And it'll actually, um, you know, we'll start to see them color up, get good polyp extension. We let them kind of really acclimate to being in a box before we want to start cutting on those. But it's always available. We always take requests. We can put you on a list, whatever you need. And let's take a peek around here. Uh, we do have quite a few fish as well. Uh, some guys do have utility. Some are just ornate. We've got quite a few blotched anthias in here. That's one little little bragging right. We've got we've probably got a little over half a dozen of these guys in here by now. Um, ignore the glue spot. <laughs> um, the rest of them, most of them are going to have utility. Like you see, we have the classic whitetail Cole. He's doing his job right now, picking at some algae. Got the fox face doing the same thing. Uh, we've got some springer eye damsels in here just in case some flatworms decide to make their way in on a wild coral of some sort. So, you know, like most people, we deal with some issues ourselves. You're going to run into that anytime you're taking on a wild species. Um, but this does allow us to take the more natural route and not have to throw a bunch of chemicals and additives into a system of this caliber. Um, recently, we have made a lot of changes, as I mentioned before took the halides off. We've also gone pretty automated with most of our system. Got a lot of uh, Neptune accoutrement going on. Everything's on dosers. We've gone over to Kalkwasser dosing for our evening hours and it kind of saves us from topping off the tank as well. And we have started a different dosing regimen. Um, we've switched brands here recently and this has been I'd have to say I've, I've seen some really good improvement uh, since we switched over the last couple of weeks. And this has really brought some colors out of the, some of the wild stuff that comes in kind of faded pastel. You can see this colony here. Um, that's, that's a wild colony we got maybe two, three weeks ago, almost completely white. Um, it's just kind of the nature of the beast. That's how they come in when they get collected and shipped and everything else, the wild portals. Take a little time to get used to a glass box or acrylic, depending on which one you're talking about. So now I'm going to take you guys over, show you show you our biggest tank. It's our 1500 gallon. Let's go. Oh, this is the biggest display we have in the store. This is the 1500 gallon we call Big Boy. Um, this one was built by us. Most of the displays you're going to see in the store was all like they were fabricated by us. Um, we've got one Red Sea display that you should see in the video here. That one obviously was manufactured by Red Sea. Beautiful tank. Um, but as far as the, the big displays go, these were all put together right here. Um, this one houses our largest species. This is kind of our, this kind of a, a saving grace for people that do have larger tanks but they still have some fish outgrow this gives them a safe place to bring them and know that they're going to be happy and they're in a large enough aquarium that they can they can thrive um, there's this little guy just went in a couple of days ago we've got our new tiger angel Ooh. Uh, look at him making a little cameo show yourself off show him what you got bud <laughs> Um, tank does have a little bit of algae going on right now. There's been a lot of changes going on as we build our new predator display that's gone up this week. We've been pulling a lot of rocks out of here and we've had a lot of white lights hitting the tank. So I apologize, there's a little bit of algae across the sand, but just kind of the nature of the beast. Um, we've got a couple of giant species. We've got the unicorn tang in here with the baby blue blades. Watch out now. Um, We've also got some larger angels, which is another reason we pulled the rocks out of here that had the coral on them. Um, we did have just soft corals, so if they ate a couple, it wasn't a huge deal. But, you know, this allows us now to further treat the tank if we need to, because most of the people that bring fish in, they wait a little too long and the fish is stressed when it comes in. So we do go through some issues with that from time to time. Um, to also help alleviate that, I have about a seven foot sterilizer underneath this tank. It's the size of a cannon. Um, hoping our other rare piece in here will come make an appearance. 
Got an aberrant Scopus in here. He's a color aberrant. Um, he came in about a little over a year ago. He's Steelers colors. I'm a big Steelers fan, so i um, big fan of the fish. But my favorite guy in here ha absolutely has to be Mr. Donatello. This bull flamingi ended up being a very personable fish. Um, he was in here from the start and another bull flamingi and him started butting the heads about three, four months in. So we, we put him in one of our 600 gallon displays and he ended up being one of the most personable fish I've ever come across. He loves to be pet. He likes to play games. Um, he, he'll do tricks for his food. He's just, he's really into people. Um, kind of became a mascot for the store, but right now that's another display that's, that's in the works. So he ended up back in Big Boy, and he's been getting along pretty good. The other bull flamingi we sold to somebody, so he doesn't have any of the same species to really worry about. Seems a little irritated that he doesn't get to hang out with his human friends anymore, but he's doing good. Um, but other than that, this one, this one is always here. You know, a lot of people like to bring in their kids. This is a good tank to really be able to show them some of the adult species and stuff that they would see if they were to go out in the ocean, you guys go on vacation, you go diving somewhere. A lot of these guys are gonna be prevalent, especially, you know, we've got some Hawaiian fish in here. There's a lot of Indo-Pacific, uh, but just a, just a great tank. You know, this one's been up quite a while now, uh, probably, I would say about a decade, I would assume. And um, just really hit a good maturity level. And we house everything in here from the larger species to larger sharks. I've had rays in here. Um, you know, we, we even get some free swimming sharks. We've had smooth hounds. Um, this, this, this tank can really rival some aquariums at times, like city and state aquariums. There he is. So there's the aberrant scopus. He's really starting to get some colors. He is changing a little bit now that I think he's probably around about the six year mark. He's an expensive one. But that pretty much wraps up the big tank here. Um, I mean, as far as, actually, let me, let me show you guys real quick how simple we are with the filtration. Uh, it might be a little bit dark back here. It might be a little loud, but pretty simple. I mean, we're running an algae scrubber to help with nutrients. We do have a reactor here set up. We run a little bit of GFO. And we have a skimmer. Other than that, we have a mechanical filtration with some socks to get changed out every two, three days. And it just keeps plugging along. Um, it's a fish only tank, so it is a little easier, especially now that the soft corals are out. Um, but that's about it. It's a big tank, but it really doesn't take too much. Most, most of the work comes from elbow grease to cleaning the inside. All right, so what we're looking at right here is our Red Sea 900 XL. This is probably one of the largest flagship tanks from Red Sea. Larger one than this is gonna be the 1000 series. This is primarily only softies. This is gonna be mushrooms, zoanthids, leathers. Uh, we do have bounce mushrooms that are gonna be down on this side. And what's kind of cool is we made these little coves, even though this is a bare bottom tank, we made these coves and we put sand in there so we can actually still do certain mushrooms, grasses that like to hide in there. It's just like a little safe haven for these guys. So you can keep going through in the entire system and then you're gonna get to our Yuma patch, which is this guy sitting down right here. Uh, he's got quite a collection of Yumas, I would say, those in Rhodactuses and Discosomas. Uh, going more off to the right, this is where we're gonna to get to our Discosoma area, more of our jawbreakers, things like that. Again, if you know anything about jawbreaker mushrooms, they are a pain in the butt to keep uh, attached to a rock. So most of the time they live in a cup or they're gonna live in a nice little cave like that. Um, pretty much a very simple system. Right now, I do have my skimmer on a timer just because for nutrients in this, I don't need to be anything strict or low on nutrients. So I actually have run this skimmer on a 12 hour period. Uh, we do run the Red Sea doser on here. Let's see if I can get this other side open. 
and just a simple sock filtration that we're doing with some nice bio media that's in the back chamber. Besides that, a very simple tank to keep going. The only thing you have to add is obviously is alkalinity and top off water. All right, so what we're looking at here is what I call the Dragon Den. This system is our newest system that we completed here at the Coral Corral. It's approximately eight feet long, four feet wide, two feet tall. Has four eels in here right now. Have my banana eel, as you can see. I have two dragons, male and female, and I have a gold banded uh, zebra eel in here as well. Also, I do have 99 damsels. This is probably gonna be eh, some softy corals in there. I'm not gonna go too crazy. Maybe a grouper, something like that. Straight predatory style on this system right here. It's also ran by six of the AIs. Um, very simple system. Probably one of the easiest ones that we've ever installed or actually plumbed. Um, you can see down here, the plumbing that we did on this. What's interesting on this system, and we're gonna to try to get away by not running a protein skimmer, is my sump, which is this system next door, which is a 600 gallon uh, tub, full of live rock. I'm gonna do mangroves in here. It's gonna be its own little, basically, refugium paradise. So hopefully with this system, it's sitting at five parts million on nitrates right now. It's gonna be a self-running system without a protein skimmer. I don't know if we can see where any of the other guys are at right now. Let's take a walk around this layer. No power heads. The tops on this tank are totally sealed. I have nylon screws that are actually on top of a brace that seals that on top. No, no escaping on this bad boy. Oh, here we go. So this is the male dragon eel. He's been around for a while, but the oldest residence here is the golden, the banana eel that we have on the other side. And I think that's pretty much it for the, the Dragon Den. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so this brings us to the other tank here at the Coral Corral. This one we call the Pillar Tank. This one is designed only with anemones, starting off with our rose bubbles, our carpets, Ritter eyes, and a Nexus bubble anemone down there. Bicolor, half color orange and green. We did have it split earlier this year. It did split off a solid green one. We're hoping to get some red out of it. The fish that we do have in here are gonna be yellow coarse wrasses, melanaris wrasses. I'm looking for fish that are gonna be working and helping anything on the rock. If we go to the front of this system, you see this huge mass of these rose bubbles right here. I mean, I've got anemone crabs, anemone shrimp, all living in here, symbiotic relationship. One of the coolest pieces I think here at the shop is really this, this whole front section right here. Coming off to this side of the system, again, I'm gonna have more carpet anemones laying around. Now I do have black widows in here. Um, we do have the Colorado sunburst in here. It's a mixture of all bubbles, really. Um, we used to have more of the Ritter eyes. I only have a blue one in here, but we're gonna obviously pick up that inventory very soon. Um, a pair of clowns in here are gonna be fire clowns from Australia. Probably one of the oldest residents here at the Coral Corral. They definitely like to go in and out of all these guys. Again, this is a system that you can just sit in front and be mesmerized for hours. The lighting that we do have on top of this one is gonna be the, I, uh, the AI Hydra 52s. Uh, primarily only blues. We kind of tend to like to run that color here. It looks really good. Simple sub system that I have down here. Running bio blocks that are gonna be in the front chamber right there. 
protein skimmer. I do run a UV sterilizer on this system and a chiller, so I like to keep the system running around 74, 75 degrees. Besides that, this is probably one of the more fun systems here to work at the Coral Corral and very enjoyable. Thanks for checking out the pillar. All right, so this is our 800 gallon display step down tank. This is mainly our LPS. So you see down here, we have a bunch of nice acanthophilias. We've got octos, hammers and torches going along these arches. So let's take a, a look around here. This is a peninsula style tank. So you get all the little angles you want. Take a look at that bad girl right there. Now that's a split colored Ganyapora. I would say at least 10 to 15 years old. And probably the same goes to its amount, probably 10 to $15,000, quite the pretty penny, I must say. Well, let's come around over here. You know, we can see all of our torches and all of our other endophilias, acanthophilias, cinerias. So over on this panel, we have all of our bigger blastos, eight cans. We got some Bauer Bank guys up there. And then we got our Scullies. We've got a couple of buttons, we've got a couple of croc islands, but then we got the nice big war paint. It's everything you're really looking for. And then we have a couple of Aussie elegances back there. I think we have an Indo on the other side, but this is by far my favorite tank. I'm a big LPS guy and to have such a nice grand showcase of all in one tank, it really ties this whole hobby together for me. That's, that's just how I feel about it. Definitely my favorite corals. dry section this is going to be where as you can see they have their filter socks their scrapers their magnet scrapers t5 bulbs some uh, black egg crate and now if we move a little further down we're going to start seeing their rodi filters some uh, calcium and supplements there's also rock down on the bottom of the shelf you can also see that they have a wide assortment of dry foods such as pellets flakes coral food and then we also have our filter media, which is gonna be like your carbon, GFO, and your uh, reactors. And we're also gonna have the wave makers, your submersible pumps, all of that fun stuff. And then we're gonna have protein skimmers and some uh, littler pumps. And then we're gonna also see some life sand, some sand at the bottom and some uh, plumbing attachments and water change accessories. So what makes this store unique in Florida? I think what makes this store unique is going to be part of the diversity that we actually get in here. I mean, the owner of here is going to be getting things that no other store can get. He's got the cool looking for stuff. I mean, it's just the uniqueness that, uh, yeah, it's got to be the corals that no one else has. And if I had to put something up there, I'd say, um, and definitely fucking service. Uh, I think that we've come and kind of established a pedigree with our customers that you know, they can ask questions, um, they, can, they can talk to us with odd questions, you know. Um, and I think that that's you know, kind of, it's kind of where a lot of the hobby is lacking, where people get a little bit of tenure and they, they, they kind of feel like they hear questions. Them, uh, or that they feel a waste of 
time explaining things and like, oh yeah, you can go online and you can find this information on the internet. Yeah, you can. But I also have a person in front of me that is curious. They may they may have a different modality, it may be harder to sit down and just listen to or watch a YouTube video and learn something or read something off the web to me. And if I can spend fifteen minutes with that person in the beginning and tell them how the like, cycle like works or you know why certain I really gain their confidence, their, their trust, their customer for the next 10 or 15 years. And I think that's one thing that we really, we really try and pride ourselves on here, especially when I'm with customer. Don't get me wrong, I don't, we get busy. Sometimes I have to like, tell somebody, hey, you know, I'll, I'll have more time during the meet or, or something like that. But I always need to go to come in and ask and they're not they're, they're not gonna shove away or cut short because they're they're asking us too much. So I, I think that's a that's a fun part of the hobby too is being able to get into a relationship with the customer, start to learn what they like in the hobby, start to learn their thing. So when you see a different mindset and you say, you know, we get some rare stuff. You might you might get a flamboyant cuddle pitch if John doesn't take them all I might have two or three people that I know that would love that. Um, yeah, you know, so go to them with people and see their gratification. They start to learn, they start to get the science down, and then all of a sudden you see that fever, you know, that re fever that people get that we have working here, like you just can't quit. And that it's, it's, it's not only contagious, but it's gratifying for us to see people find success. And obviously, them finding success helps us stay open. So, you know, it's important that we bear people too. But yeah, yeah, it has to happen. Absolutely. I mean, most of the products that we have here were pretty familiar. We all know them ourselves. We, we, we're working with them. So, we sell products here. We make sure that people understand what they're buying and just not going cold and going right to the end. This is something where you come into the shop and you're going to get exactly what you want. And that's what we strive for. We have the customer service. So, Somebody, somebody has put somebody here has put every piece of equipment here for some kind of truck. You know, we don't uh, we don't sell things or post things that we don't believe in. We have to use it ourselves. I even had companies that you know, their products were pretty good. And once myself, I've had it, I've had a few people that are making that I've been in trouble with them and received really bad customer service or actually no parts of the back whatsoever. Stop selling. I'm not going to leave people on their own. They buy a product and have a full confidence that as expensive as this hobby is, their money is going towards something. It's going to be a you know, long term. This is going to like, use it for two months and breaks and throw it away and get a new one type of hobby. It's a too expensive event. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely customer service oriented and we have a great time with the hobby. Uh, John and I, you know, we enjoy what we do. It's a good environment. Come on in. Stop by.